we're there, we're there. <laughs> right guys, welcome to Hair Drug Treatment. We are finally live. I believe it's working. Everything seems to be up and running and I'm joined by Nat. Nat, how are you doing? Hey guys, I'm doing good. Got back from France Not today. Fun. I believe it's working. Got a bit back going now. Um, Nat, you were at PSG the other day. Yeah. I'm, start, I'm going to dive straight into that. How was it? Because it looked absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm well jealous that you were there. How was it? It was the best. Euro way, probably the best away I've ever done, and I loved it. It was just, it was surreal. It's like it, we weren't even, um, it's like we weren't even, you know, what can you say? No team's ever done that. So for us to do that out there with like all the young kids, it was just, it was amazing. Yeah, like you mentioned the young kids, obviously, I'm going to say, because this has been a talking point really. McTominay, I'm going to start with, he's been getting a lot of stick, people are saying he's a boring player, um, what does Fergie see in him, because Fergie obviously rated him very highly, and I've had a bit of stick because I've actually been defending him on Twitter saying, look, yeah. teams need players like Scotty McTominay, players in the middle who are going to do the dirty work for you, keeps it simple, yes, he's not the most glamorous of players, but for me, I thought he proved his worth if not against PSG, I mm. mean, who were there, did he look any different from the stands, but on TV, if, he really impressed me anyway, and I think he was, he was crucial in that result. I've always liked Scotty since like the day he came in. Um, talking about like Euro ways, him, him at Sevilla, his first real test, I thought he did well then. I thought he was going to be the exact player, playing worldy balls, scoring screamers. He's just a guy. It's like um, Ollie said, the Darren Fletcher. So, exactly. You know, you Darren Fletcher can yeah. do it. And have you seen make yeah, exactly. And have you seen the videos of the celebrations? The way that he was, you could hear Scott McTominay for everyone just like giving it his all. Like that meant so much to him. And I've seen pictures of him crying at full time. And that's the kind of guy, that's the kind of spirit that we need at United. And I know he's not technically the most amazing, but fair play. And you know what? He shut some of his haters up the other night, definitely. Um, yeah. the comments. Well, Happy he's... International Women's Day, we've just been wished. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> Uh, so thank you very much for that. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. So the PSG game, obviously we're through now. Ideally, who would you like in the next round? Who's your choice? Well, if I'm talking from my balance point, I like uh, uh, the Tottenham. I think that would be a really good game, Tottenham. I think we could get about 12k maybe down at Wembley. I think it'd be amazing. But if we're talking, I think we could take on everyone. Porto, we can definitely beat them. Ajax, even though they went to um, Madrid and did that, like I think we can still give them a go. There's no one out there that I really fear because we've just come back and we've just shown. So I think we'll be up for it, whoever it is. I hope we get maybe a way. Well, either way it's drawn, I think we'll be up for it. And I think now that's giving us the confidence to think we can go and win this whole thing. Why not? Exactly. We can win the whole thing. And... There's a saying, isn't there? That you have to beat the best teams to get to a final. You have to beat the best teams to, to win a competition. So I think no matter what, we're going to have to play the dreaded teams like in the competition. We're going to have to. Um, I've seen. I've asked a few people this question and said, "Oh, they really love Liverpool." Uh, I'm not sure if I want Liverpool in the next round. Mm. However, imagine a Liverpool United final in the Champions League. Just imagine that for a moment because obviously if they go through against Munich, they've still got a job to do though. They have still yeah. got a job to do, but I do think they're going to go through against Munich. I'm not sure what you think about that, but yeah, imagine that for a moment. I think Munich are going to beat them, to be honest. I think. I hope you're right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they're not that, you know, they're not in a good vein of form. I think Munich will just be too much for them out there. And I think a final, it would be amazing. But I just think, imagine if they beat us in a final. But so it's like, it's like catch 22, it? It's fine. <laughs> it's like catch 22. But there's this post going around, so I don't know if people have seen on Twitter, it says, oh, in 2016 or something, Liverpool lost to Sevilla. And then the next year, we went and won the Europa League. So obviously, they've just lost the Champions League final. What's going to happen with us? I'm not, I'm not trying to jinx it. I'm not about <laughs> that life. But I think we can definitely... Yeah. I'm going to end this call right now, Nat. I'm going to end it because <laughs> <laughs> um, I've just seen Lewis from obviously 100% Chelsea. Lewis said, 
Um, Scott McTominay is going to win the Ballon d'Or. He's also a big enough Phil Jones in the comments. Yeah. Don't mention Phil Jones in these comments at the minute because Chris Smalling or Smaldini is recalling him at the moment. Again, he was colossal the other day in that win, wasn't he, against PSG? Um, for me, he's got to keep his place, surely. I think him and Lindelof at the moment are our best two centre-backs, our best partnership. Do you agree with that? Yeah, 100%. Um, Smalling, obviously, he's, he had the form when he was under Louis van Gaal and everyone thought, oh, Mike Smalling. And then he sort of dropped off and then he picked it up again. And yeah, Mike was off. immense. Mike. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this is Mike back now. This is Mike back now. And I just think him and Victor playing week in, week out, that's what they needed to, to get a solid foundation. And I mean, I know Smalling says a lot about being a vegan and it's helped him. So he's not getting his injuries. But I think without him, he was out for a bit, wasn't he? We missed him. Yeah. Now he's back and he's just looking like a beast. Him and Victor are amazing. I love Victor. He's another one that was slugged off at the start, but he's come good and he's shown the, the real player that he is. I would agree with that completely. I think we call him the Iceman because under pressure, he just he seems to be getting better and better with every game, to be honest. And I remember when we played against Juventus and we were poor, but he was absolutely superb in that game. Like I think he's showing more and more leadership qualities as well the more he's playing because there were talks about Pogba and Herrera being captain, but he's creeping up at the minute as to being another candidate for that role. And I think if he continues to progress in the future, he could be a leader, it could be a captain um, at United. Um, Koulibaly is the one that people want to be mm. your partner. Would you like Koulibaly at United? I think we definitely need someone in there. So, you know, he's showing it in Italy. Why not? Give him a chance. I heard that he definitely wants to come, so I give him a chance. Obviously, I don't watch Italy Italian football week in week out. You just see what you see, and yeah, he does look like a a good player. But I think as well, let let someone come in and win that place. Don't you know? I think we definitely need some backup in there because you can't be playing like uh, Jones all the time, or you can't be playing. Why not? Why not? He took Bay off, so I think. Let's see. So I think definitely someone has to come in, but they have to win the place. That's how it should be at United. You can't just walk in this team. Your name's not messy. You're not just walking in. You need to win your place off these players. So you're not even walking in at the minute anyway. Yeah, Lukaku, no, no. Lukaku's playing anyway. So Lukaku's banging him in for at the minute. Yeah, yeah. In all fairness, Lingard. Lingard's coming back as well. Messi Lingard. Messi Lingard, exactly. Uh, in all fairness, <laughs> Lukaku, though, I, I have given him a stick because I feel that he went through a patch where he was extremely poor and it wasn't necessarily, yeah, you can't control the ball and I still stick to that. But um, it was more the fact that he, um, his work rate, he didn't look like he was working hard enough for me. And I think if you're not playing well, fair enough, everybody has a bad patch of form. That happens to everyone. Um, but it just didn't seem to be working so hard. But I, and I always say credit to where it's due. The last few games, we've had injuries and he stepped up to the plate. Lukaku, he's been banging the goals when we've needed him most, really. So I think, you know what, I, I've got no no qualms with him. I'll give credit where it's due. And I think, you know what, he's proved his worth over these last, last few games as well. And obviously, he scored two important goals the other night as well. I think Lukaku is a confidence player. Definitely. And I would think, I thought under Jose, he's your boy, you know, they were tight. They started off like that. But I think Jose lost everyone and everyone's just drifted apart from him. So then I think if you look at like that Spurs game, first game of the season, he rounded the keeper and he put it wide. Whereas last night he rounded the keeper and he had to go even further away and he slotted it in. And I think he even said a lot, a lot of it is down to Ali, bringing him in at training. They're high intensity. They know what they have to do. Um, playing the two, him and Rashford. So he's chasing in balls when Rashford shoots and vice versa. I just think they both love playing in a two, love playing together, and that intensity has made him get up his fitness back up. Because I think he's he needed to lose a bit. He even said, that, you know, I put on too much weight. Maybe that's what Jose wanted—a big hold-up player. But like you say, he can't hold up the ball. He's more of that guy you playing over the top, or that guy that follows through. So, you know, yeah, he's back. So Rashford and Lukaku and New York and Cole. Is that what you're saying? That. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Rashford though for me is the one just oh, quality. My favorite. I think he he can be whatever he wants to be. I mean, no people are saying this, that, and that about Mbappe, but Rashford can be whatever he wants to be. And he's probably a confidence player too, but definitely Lukaku's a confidence player. Yeah, definitely I, I agree with that completely. Um and like you say, so it was social socials. When Sasha took over, he was injured, wasn't he, or he's away, but he wasn't playing. 
um, for personal reasons, whatever it was at the time. And I think that was really bad timing for him because everyone else was proving the worth in training so they were giving shots. And he had to kind of work for his chance. And now he's being given that chance with a run of games. And you know what? Fair play to him because he could have easily just stropped. Um, could have easily sat on the bench, milked around and asked to leave. But he hasn't. He's fought for his place. And look, that's a big shot for the place. Um, there, there will always be people, or there should always be people, putting pressure on you from the bench to make you perform. And... That's what Lukaku's done, and I've got, like I say, his attitude, I've got to credit him. So, mm. big up Lukaku in this one, definitely. Yeah. This weekend, though, we've got, mm. apparently, well, Martial's back, Herrera, yeah. Matic, all it, obviously in the point, wanting to come back as well. Do you think they should come back and start straight away against Arsenal? What would you do? Because Fred, the other day, the game was, was fantastic. It's, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because you don't want to put all this pressure on the kids. But... I just say, I don't, it's one of them where you can't drop them, really. It's undroppable, but... Yeah, I've got the little key factor there, though. That's what you yeah, yeah. That's, it's, it's, it's so hard, so if I don't know, like, I, w I would hate to be in this position, but this is what he's paid for. Well, he's not, hopefully he'll get the job. We all think he's going to get the job, but yeah. this is what he's paid for because Scotty, Fred, even Pereira, he came in and I was sort of like, oh, I'm not sure about Pereira. He's been playing under Jose, I'm not sure, but scored that worldie and then he's had a good game in Paris so it's one of them but you play in Arsenal and I know we've just gone and beaten them but you know people like that's the game when you want people like Matic and definitely Herrera we definitely missed him when he came off yeah um versus, versus Liverpool so it's one of them if he does you know if them two definitely Herrera and then Matic come back in I can't you can't really say anything bad about that it's just good to have them all back it's a good headache to have, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's cliche, managers say that, like, it's a good thing to have a headache. But it, in this case, it really is because we saw all the injuries and we all dreaded it as United fans. We were thinking, God, that's it. Like, we finally were on the up and then this has happened. It's going to knock us back down again. And it hasn't. Yeah. It hasn't. We've obviously ridden this storm. Like Ole said, that mountains are there to be climbed and we've climbed the, those mountains. So now you're thinking... Maybe these guys should be given a run of games. Yeah. Maybe they should be put under pressure by the likes of Herrera and that coming back to continue these performances. But again, I'm thinking a midweek game, one of such magnitude as well, you've got to say, we'll take its toll on some players. Pog yeah. obviously should be coming straight back in, which yeah. will affect someone in that middle. Um, McTominay, Pereira. Obviously, Pereira is probably the one who's going to be dropped for that one. But like you say, even Pereira, he was, he was brilliant the other night, scored a fantastic goal. Um, and Fred, I kind of, I kind of hope Fred is given a run of games now because yeah. we paid so much money for him, and I was thinking, is he really worth it? I haven't seen a lot from him, and the other, the other night, without doubt, was the best I've seen of Fred in the United shirt. And I'm hoping he can just kick on from here now because he's got so much talent. Pep wanted him at City for a reason, yeah. and I just, I want to try and fit him in. But yeah. where would you fit Fred in with the likes of Ferreira? Matic obviously is crucial as well in that holding role, um, and it's, it's a good edit, but horrible. Yeah. I mean, he said, Ollie said, you know, Fred, you've got to take your chance. So he's t taking it now. And he said, you know, maybe keep Fred in, Fred Pogba and Herrera, or Fred Pogba and Matic. Maybe don't put both of them two in at the same time because obviously, you know, they're both coming back from injury. So play one of them. Um, but like you said, Fred's pr proven. We paid the money for him. He is a first teamer, even though, like, I'd be devastated for Scotty and Andreas, but I think they probably would understand. And like you say, Pogba will walk back in. Yeah. Um, but that's what maybe what I'd do, yeah. Put your Fred, your Pogba and uh, I'd say Herrera, to be honest, because I think he's that little terrier who's just bouncing around everywhere, box to box. So even though Matic is the DM, I'd just play Herrera. Cool, yeah. I, I can't really argue with that. I love Herrera as well. So we've had um, a super chat from Mr Exclusive. Thank you so much. I hope you're well. And he says, bless up people, share and sub peeps. All the best, Mr E. So thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Um, a lot of people bigging up this show. So it's good news now. Mm -hmm. We're not having too much grief. Yeah. Um, someone just said Herrera is the best United player. Fred was fantastic against PSG. Someone said, who are Arsenal? I quite like yeah. that one. I quite like that one. They play on Thursday night, so in case you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Fred is a good box-to-box -box player. Again, I completely agree. He's got so much energy. I described him like a little pit bull in the middle. It didn't leave Verratti alone the other day, like McTominay mm. as well. Um, and I actually really rate Verratti. I think he's one of the best mids in the world. He absolutely dictated the midfield in that first leg. But yeah. 
the other night, fantastic. Um, Ole's at the wheel. Yeah. Someone can ask where Lou is from. He's from 100% Chelsea. Can you not tell from his comments? <laughs> Again, they play on Thursday nights, just in case you're wondering. Yeah. Um, Cal says De Gea is our best player. De Gea is quality. And I'll tell you what, I, I bet you have felt the same in the stadium. He nearly gave me a heart attack when he chose to punch that ball right at the end. Rob. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, what are you doing, David? But it's like you just yeah. wanted the world to just suffer even more. Um, but he is quality, isn't he? I mean, I hope he stays. Do you think he will? Well, he put a post up after and he was like, this is Man United, we're back and all this. And I just think, this is Man United, where, where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Um, bloody hell, Real Madrid might be after him because that Thibaut quota is shocking. But I just, I think give him what he wants. Forget, forget all this trying to save money and kind of attitude. Just give the man the contract. You know, you put yourself in this position by giving Sanchez so much. So what did you expect? And I know they're probably then thinking, oh, and then so-and-so will want it, then this one will want it. But if anyone deserves it, it's De Gea. And I think, you know, if it comes down to it, if you said to every United fan out there, right, Sanchez or De Gea, there's only one winner. He said even probably Pogba or De Gea, there's only one winner for people. So yeah. the man's done so much for us. I just, I mean, it is all sounding good. It sounds like he wants to stay, whereas you'd be in a position if he was thinking I wanted to go. It sounds like he wants to stay. It's just the money's a sticking point. And it's not like we ain't got it. So I, I'll tell you where all that money is going at the minute, though. Sanchez is back pocket. That's where it's going. Yeah. And get him out. Get, give it the hey, that's what you do. It's simple for me. Do you want I, Sanchez gone? I don't. It's, it's hard. It's so hard. He's not really done it, has he, though? But if you said to me, you have to sell Sanchez to keep the hay, there's only, you know, then yeah. But they're saying about this Sancho as well, aren't they? So. He's more United player than than Sanchez. Sanchez just looks shot to pieces. Yeah, it's not just makes sense. I think mean, that's affected him massively. He doesn't look as confident going forwards. Like before, you just see him get the ball, knock it, and run past players, take him on the outside, and he just can't do that anymore. Which is why he cuts inside all the time. He's still a very intelligent player. I think he proved that with the goal against Arsenal. Like his movement, he he's an intelligent player, but he shows it in spells. Um, which isn't enough, is it, for a player of that magnitude? No. You want more from him. So you're right. He hasn't done it. And it kills me because I know what player he was and I obviously want to yeah. see that at, back at United. But it's just not going to happen, I don't think. He's been given plenty of chances now. He's obviously injured long term. I think that his time is up at United. And Sancho, who you mentioned then, I actually spoke about him the other day. I said, I rate him. I think he's a very good player. However, 100 million was the price that was being batted around for him. And I just I don't want him to be another overhyped young player coming mm. through the ranks. I mean, if you look at the likes of Hudson Adoy at Chelsea, I think he's an awesome talent. Um, and I just don't like seeing these young players getting over hyped too much. If you think like Walcott, for example, was another example where they just get bigged up too much because they're English and the press do that. I think the move to Dortmund was fantastic for Sancho because he was obviously he took the initiative he wanted to play more, which is absolutely fantastic. However, like you said earlier about the Italian league, I don't get to watch too much of the German league, to be honest with you. So I only see him in short spells. And I've seen obviously clips of his goals and things and he does look very good. But 100 million for me seems like a lot. And I think it's just because he's English. Yeah. I mean, I've just seen someone in the comments read per 2004. He says, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer still has faith in Alexis. And I think, though, Oli will always have faith in players. I don't think he's ever going to say, you know, so-and-so, sell so-and-so, don't do this, don't do that. He even said about Valencia, you know, he didn't. He said it's sort of up to him. So I don't think he's going to come out and say, yes. and say oh, I, want I, want out. I want that person out. But I think... I agree with the whole Sancho, it's not 100 million, but that's the way players are going now. And I just think, you know, look at that Kepper for Chelsea. He was about 88 million and he's nowhere near that. And I just think, if you want a top quality player, this is what you've got to play. And apparently Oli was talking about long term. Long term is Sancho. So it's one of them. If they're going to pay 100 million, get Dave to, to sign a contract. That's all I can say. I agree. No, I back to that, but that's the money that you've got. And I think that's the, I don't I, it makes me sick to my stomach hearing it because back in the day when I was growing up, it was like, oh my God, 30 million for Rio Ferdinand and Rio was with us for like all our life. But like even like John Sturton's are saying, oh, he's Rio. But obviously he's not, but you know, <laughs> 50 million and everything's going up like that. There is still bargains out there because remember we've got Victor 30. So I think you have to go to these kind of leagues. You have to go to your Portugal, maybe lower German team. 
you know, stuff like that. But like I said, I don't know about these leagues. So hopefully, I hope Phil Hardy knows about someone in um, Norway, maybe someone like that, come over, someone like himself. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Um, happy International Women's Day. Keep up the good work, Sophie. Also, what are your thoughts about Man United's women's team? We're going to be discussing that in a minute. Um, thank you very much for the super chat, Alex. I really do appreciate it. But we will be moving on to the women's team, don't you worry. Um, I just want to touch on you said there are still bargains out there. Delo. Mm. Again, he came on and changed the game the other night. He got the ball, he was directed, he did a little step over, cut on the inside, and all, there was almost an on goal from him being positive. And I thought, you know what, this lad has got something about him. And this is one thing we have to thank Mourinho for because yeah. he brought the low in and people forget about that. If yeah. he was one that went under the radar, I hadn't really never really heard of the kid. Mm. Um, but he's definitely got something about him, hasn't he? I know people might not like Jose, but for me, yeah, he's, he lost the dressing room. Fair enough, he went. But if you look at some of his buys, they are quality. And, like, you just got to respect him. And, yeah, he might not have, it, you know, but Delo, Victor, um, he brought in Matic, brought in Lukaku. Obviously, Ibra's not with us anymore, but that was another quality buy. Even Baye, he might come back again. But, you know, he bought him for the cheap. So, hopefully, you know, Delo's going to, Delo's one for the future as well. He's going to be here for years. You could tell the way he celebrated after Rashford's penalty, he jumped in with the away fans <laughs> before before everyone else did. Yeah, so yeah, you can tell how much it means to him just playing for this club. Um, and that was one everyone was looking at him Barcelona, Real Madrid. This, anyway, that's why they had to go and get him then. And I remember when he signed, everyone was like, Why have we got this guy? We need experience, but you got to play them to get experience. So he showed yeah, them like, like Sandro, didn't they? And big names like that. And then we signed him yeah. from nowhere. And people were like, Who even is this? Like, is he ever even going to play? And fair play to him. He's changed the last two games for us. He came on, obviously, the weekend was superb. And then in the week, again, he came, he came on and changed the game. Because that right on side, you mentioned Boye might come back. People are saying it's probably his last game for United. However, Boye, for me, I think he was being played out of position. Ashley Young didn't really help him. I tweeted saying he was in a different postcode. He was that lost Ashley Young at times. Both of them didn't really know what they were doing in that system. And PSG were obviously getting down that left side a lot um, with Di Maria. But I think after the challenge, Delo came on, Young dropped deeper. We just looked so much more secure, but we also looked more threatening going in for, going forwards. And as a lot of people say, is he a right winger or is he a right back? For me, he's a right back. Right wing back, maybe. Um, but he's very positive on the ball. And... If you look at likes of Valencia, um, yeah. he gets the ball, passes sideways, and you're so frustrated because he had so much pace and you just wanted him to run at people. Delo isn't afraid of doing that, and that's what I really like about him. He will take risks. And that's also mm -hmm. Solskjaer as well, obviously. He wants players yeah. to take risks. Um, so I'm feeling really positive about him, definitely. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, Delo, he started off as a left full, uh, left back, and he went left midfield. And the way Delo was cutting in, that shot, even at, you know the penalty, that you know he can do that the way he's whipping in balls and I think maybe bring through there's a young kid who actually came he didn't come on but he's called Brandon Williams he plays for the under 18s he's a captain yeah he's really good at and then there's um Pudgemal so I think bring through some of the kids I know it's sort of might be heavily towards the kids but for me I can see Delo being right wing back maybe like a bail I'm not saying he's going to be that good but that's the kind of potential that the, the kid has got yeah. maybe he might drop back in Ashley Young's not going to be here forever, um, so he might end up paying more at the right back. But why not just play him up front? Because that's where he's doing it. You know, Palace, Southampton, Paris, play him there. Let him run at people. People look terrified when when he's running at them. So yeah, give him the run of games because with a run of games, they'll just get better and better, won't he? So completely agree with that. Completely agree. Right. We're going to move on to the women because we said we're the um, ladies team and we know that we want to get more exposure to the women's team. Now you're there week in, week out. I'm jealous of that, of course, because I play myself so I can't get there. So um, you, you have a lot more knowledge about the ladies team than me. Okay. I've seen them more firsthand. But um, first, obviously the season, first season of United Ladies, how is it going? Because all you hear is positivity coming out um, from the women's team and fair play to the team for that. Casey Stone is doing a great job. What's the atmosphere like at the games? Oh, it's so good. It's like rocking every game. And I just say to anyone who wants to come down, come to LSV, it's absolutely rocking. Like, for me, I went there and I thought, all right, I'm new to this women's football. I've never watched it before, but we're singing all United songs. Everyone's getting behind the team. It's team buzz off us singing all the songs. Um, it's like a proper, it's like a mini Old Trafford. That's what I say. Because we're all at the back, we're all singing. Uh, we're supporting the team. You can tell the team buzz off us when we're, 
you know, behind the goal or if we're singing for them and they raise their game. Um, we're going really well. I'm so proud of all them girls, you know. They're playing for the badge, they're playing attacking football. Casey's really, you know, just come in and just thought, I need a group of girls that are going to play this United way. They're going to play the way I want to play. She plays attacking football just like Ollie. It's, it's all out. It's, it's not, you know, we're Arsenal in the cup semi-final. I know I'm going off topic here, but we were 2 nil down. She brought on attacking substitutes and then we went bang, 2-1. And you know, they they really we really rattled Arsenal at the end, and that's like the, one of the top teams of the English game. So I think these girls can be like, again whatever they want to be. Yeah, fantastic! And you know, you mentioned Casey Stoney playing the United Way, and that and she the appointment of her obviously was a, a massive massive appointment because yeah. there lots of questions: who's going to take over this um, United Ladies team? A lot of expectation yeah. um, because obviously being such a big club, but she's just. She's just taking it in a stride, hasn't she? She's been fantastic. Even every way she speaks, like it's like this is where we want to be. We're going to be in the Champions League soon. We're going to be doing this soon. This is where I want to be in ten years' time. She's that's what you want to hear from United manager. Like I come here to attack. We need to do this and get the fans behind us. You know, we don't. We'll always be behind her, but it's just the things, the statements that she's coming out with aren't like. Little things they like, yeah. This is a United manager, and she, to be fair to her, she's been in David Beckham Academy training, doing stuff there. So that's a United. She worked with Eric Hansen. I think she's maybe close with Brian Robson. So she's, and obviously she was Phil Neville's assistant. So she, she knows a lot of United. Even though we've never had a team, she knows the mantra, everything about it. Like she, she's everything we could ask for. I'm so happy. Look at the smiling face, absolutely buzzing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I believe last time out beat Sheffield United, wasn't it? Four four nil. Am I right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sheffield United actually played against last season, to be fair. So another oh, really decent test up. So um, Leicester at home this yeah. weekend. You yeah. beat Leicester first time round, a big yeah. result as well. Um, feeling confident of that game? I think yeah. every game you should feel confident, shouldn't they? Really. Uh, let's face it. But... I mean, I know people like who know about women's football say we're a full time team in this professional in this. Uh, semi-professional league but I think we've got a lot of young players that's an average age of about 21 23 and maybe it's only 23 because uh, Siobhan Chamberlain she's like 33 so she pushes it up but you know these girls if they were going to like Arsenal and in the WSL straight away I think they'd just be getting like West Ham are in the WSL straight away and they are mid-table they're a good team West Ham but we'd be getting trashed us not all the time but you know, Chelsea would trash us, Arsenal would trash us. So I think it's definitely helped us going in that league, build up the confidence. Um, you know, we're not we're not had it easy in that league. We're second. Um, we played Durham. Durham are a hard team, and they kicked us about the park. And that that gave us something, a bit of character. I think that game because um, they beat us three one at their place, and we had a nil nil draw with them at our place. So they kicked us about the park, and I think that was a bit like, wow, this is a wake up call. Because I'm not sure about you playing women's football, but some of the referees are absolutely shocking. So I've seen <laughs> girls getting, you know, kicked her in the face and done this, but they get back up and they keep going. So, you know, I'm so, you know, I don't know. It's, I'm just so happy with the girls. And they're doing everything that we can expect. Like I said, they're going out there and they're winning all these games. Last game was 7-0. They probably, I'm expecting another maybe, you know, five plus. And you can say this, that, and the other, or who we're playing against. But then when we come against a Brighton, uh, West Ham in a WSL, the week after we're playing Reading in the quarterfinal. So United men play on the Saturday, the girls play on the Sunday against Reading. I'm expecting that to be a, a more competitive than what we used to that's WSL. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people thought because United obviously were a fresh team, they should have started a lot lower and worked their way up the league. But because of the, the sheer size of the club, you couldn't you couldn't do that. You, you had to put them in at WSL too, definitely. And in terms of the officials, yeah, it's very questionable some of the refs that we get definitely in, in women's football. Yeah. Um, but maybe they should bring in VAR because mm. it worked out over the other day. I'm a big VAR fan now, I tell you. <laughs> Massive VAR fan. Um, I've looked at it as well because Spurs are top of the league, aren't they, at the minute? Yeah. I've got a good friend actually who used to play for Place for Spurs, um, Ashley oh. Neville. You, you may know her, Ashley Neville. No, but um, I know um, Emma Beckford kind of a bit. Well, I'll see. Her. I know Neville. I know. Her, I know her name. I see him. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very good player. De- definitely one of the best players I've played alongside, for sure. But um, I know they're top at the minute, but United games in hand. Um, they're pretty much dead on for the league now, surely, aren't they? I can't, I can't see us not winning the league. I'm planning ahead. I'm already planning <laughs> which game we're going to win it at. Um, I know that's sort of, people might say that's disrespectful to Tottenham and this, that, never because Tottenham are actually pulling out results like out of nowhere. They won like in the 97th minute the other day. They were nil-nil against Leicester and they got 1-0. But then we've just gone and beat Leicester 7-0. So for me, that shows a difference in class. And for me, I think when we played um, Arsenal, that showed the level that we're at. We're not quite there. We need to, you know, step it up a few notches. But, I mean, I don't want to go on big headed, but I think we can be like fourth, fifth next season in the WSL. Um, there's some talented, talented players out there. And anyone who wants to watch it, you see I see some of that talent. I know you can't compare the two, but it's like watching the boys, you know, some of the talent that the girls have. So, yeah, yeah. Um, excited watching them thinking you can be anything you want to be well it's, it's really interesting saying comparing the boys and the girls though, like the men and the female because yeah. when i played in the game for the united stand against arsenal fan tv like i've grown a bit i was absolutely crapping myself before that game because i was thinking you know what this is really interesting to see where i'm gonna fare like compared to men because obviously i've played as a as a kid with like lads and stuff yeah. like that but competitive because it was a competitive game like playing at that level just to see how it, how it felt really and you know, in all fairness like they did turn around afterwards and said like you, you didn't stand out as, like from in terms of ability, which is fantastic. So just imagine what the likes of United ladies so like. It makes me wonder. One day I would just love to see like just compare the level. I think it'd be so interesting to see because people say, "Oh, women's football is a lot slower." But if you look at technical ability, there's no difference for me. In fact, like you've got to question some girls definitely have got better technical ability than some of the men. Yeah. You, you've got to say, and I just think like. I would love to see a, a, a true comparison one day. I think that'd be really interesting, like a little experiment. Uh, definitely. Because ability-wise and technical ability, you've got to say, fantastic. The one person that makes me, like I, look, like I said before, I love Rashford. But the one person that gets me off my seat, the way that Rashford does, Lauren James, 17 years old. Um, some of the things that I've seen her do, some of the way that she like glides past players, uh, puts it top bins, just balls over the top. It was it's like, oh my god, like and there was this one moment we were playing London Bees and she made this through ball, straight through, went to Charlie's toe. Was, I can't even remember, but everyone in the stadium, you can hear it in the car. Um, it's just like it's like one of their moments and just watching her play is like that. And yeah, there's some players like, you see things earlier in their like see things. Yeah, yeah. I agree, like there's certain players who are like that in the world and that just makes them stand out from the rest. Like just just the cleverness really, isn't it? Um so you, you mentioned obviously James being a standout player for you. Mm. Obviously in terms of goal scoring, you've got the likes of Molly Green up there, Ella Toon, but who would you say has been the one player who stood out this season for you at United Ladies? Obviously James, you got a, like I just said. And Molly Green, like she's just come out of nowhere. She's popping up in the box last minute. And I'd say, like, like, this is my comparison now. Frank Lampard, like the way he used to do it and just pop up and bang. And she's scoring some worldies from outside the area. There's a goal, Palace away, and Millwall at home, two worldies. But that's what she's doing. And when we've been, like, you know, scrapping in little games, she's got them goals that put us 1 0 up, and then we've gone on and won. But if you had to say if there's any standout, apart from them two, another one. Uh, Katie Zellum, she was playing, well, she actually, she's one of our own, playing in Juventus last year. So that's showing you the talent that she has. Um, she, they won the Scudetto there uh, and she was going to be in Champions League, but she's come back to us. And especially the first game with her and versus Arsenal, she was just stand out, playing balls over the top. Like I, I said to her before, like she's like a pillow. Playing balls over the top, playing through balls. She's like that one that you see. She can see a pass and she knows when someone's running and she just plays it through. So I'd say definitely those three if you're going to put them all. But all, all 21 can stand out. Defenders, Millie Turner, Amy Turner, they've been amazing at the back for us. So it's just it's onwards and upwards, really. You can just tell like the confidence that I think as well Casey has put in all them girls because. Some of them girls weren't were playing in WSL and they were, you know, not doing that great. She she's taken them, built this team, um, in under you know, 
you know, she had a few months to do it, and she's just working miracles for me. Like, yes, yeah, it's, it's the decision too, but what can you say about her? She's she's do, doing her job, you know. Get her to sign, like Maria said, give her the contract. Tell her to the number. Do you sing um, Stonies at the Wheel? Do you sing that at the games? That's what I know. Yeah, Casey's yeah. at the Wheel. Love it. Love it. Oh, <laughs> Lord, does it feel? Oh, playing the way that we should. Casey's playing the way that we should. Because you call yourself the Barmy Army, Army, didn't you? Like you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Barmy Army. Army and... on Twitter. Oh, it's, it's, we've got, I mean, I'm not big on this kind of thing. If you, someone was doing it at the men's game, I'd be like, no, but it is a different kind of vibe at the women's game. So, yeah, you can't, you know, go around dropping F-bombs and all this. And we've been told. But for the kids, what we've done is a little book with everything that we're singing. So I know that sounds a bit, like, cheesy, and I'm not, I'm, I would never say do that. But for the women's game, like I said, it's a different kind of thing. So we do that. And we've got every song you can ever think of. And I'm always open for more. So. When I'm not playing on a Sunday, I'm definitely going to come to it. Yeah, definitely. definitely. To do that. So we do travel to away games. So if you ever like, if you ever think, oh, but they're playing away, come. So we've, we've gone from a little car to a big bus. So, we, you know, it's Probably growing. Right. You're, you're working your way up. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> um, another one I was going to talk about as well, because Skipper, Greenwood. I knew about Greenwood before she even went to United and I thought it was really good, really clever signing and a really clever decision to put her as captain, really, because she's very experienced, isn't she? Mm. Um, she's a quality player as well and obviously she's representing Lionesses, who have just won, obviously, the She Believes Cup, but Greenwood is a quality player, isn't she? Uh, I love, like, like you're saying about that experience, there's been times where she's dragged us through games and, uh, say, Palace away, like, we were backs up against the wall, they were all like sixes and sevens, and she's the one who took the ball, pushed it up the field, you know, got two assists, got a goal that day, ended up winning 5 0. But it wasn't a 5 0 game. So I think fair play to her. Skip, um, Casey's had to play her in um, midfield a lot. And I know that might be like, you know, she's a wing back, she's full back, she bombs forward, got a wicked left foot on her. So it's like, why are you playing her there? But just to solid it up, you know, she's had to, because there has been tough games for us. And I think even, she, she'll do anything for the team. So going out of position, going into position you've probably never played before, it just shows captain material. So I think definitely it was a wise decision to put her as captain and she's she's doing us proud. She is, she is. And to be fair, I mean, I know I see on Twitter all the time, everyone is so proud of the women's team, so proud of what they're doing and what they're achieving because it was a kind of mix, wasn't it, when they made, everyone wanted United to make their women's team. Of course they did because the likes of City were doing so well. And it felt like a real uh, like a, a real shame, really, that we weren't mm. uh, we weren't competing, really. And I said not long before, I actually did a documentary with UFF not long before the women's team was made. And I got asked, like, how do you feel about United? And I was saying, well, United is a business, and for me, like it's such a shame. I, of course, I want to see the likes of City and Arsenal having a competitor from United. That's what I want to see. But I was like, I'm not sure how far through it is to actually happening because United is a business, and do they really need to make a women's team? So when they did, I was absolutely buzzing. So I thought, you know what, like that's something that this club have really missed because women's football is on the rise, as we've seen, and even like. When when United ladies first started, like on Twitter, you'd barely see anything. And now, like I see Barmy Army tweets all the time, like literally <laughs> tagged in somewhere or something. You see it all the time. It's growing massively, and it's a credit to you guys going every single game. But it's a credit, obviously, to the team as well because they're getting with their performances. They're getting more and more um, people interested, and it's just a real, real good thing for the ladies' game, definitely. Yeah, and like I said, I don't know where all this Barmy Army has come from, but it's just like I said, it's just exploded, and everyone's been on it. And like you say at the start. We were like, why are they not posting every day? But today I've seen them do three posts in a row. So I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And I think, I get what you're saying about the money. I think they are thinking, if we're putting in this money, what are we going to get back out? But I think definitely if they put in more money, not even a lot, just a tiny bit more and put on more production, put out more posts, they would get so much more people interested. Um, and like I said, in terms of us following and supporting, they should be putting out merchandise. We've selling little badges and stuff you know people are like desperate for it so it's it's mad that they're not doing more but at the same time just hearing things and reading when uh the gaffer does says things in the program they want to take it slow you want to see what because like i said there are a lot of young kids so going from united when you probably had about 10k followers if that to going to united and everyone's looking at your every move 
probably daunting for some of them girls. Probably daunting for some of them girls. Us turning up at every game, they've probably never had. And a lot of them do say we've never been in places where people turn up every game. People are singing, people are going mad, people are jumping up and down. Like, it's crazy. So, but this is United. And like Casey even said, like, oh, these fans are here. They're never, we always hear them. They're like the best fans in the world. And I say for the men's team, yeah, for the women's team, probably it's still the way to go. But there's that potential of everyone to grow together, the fans, more people that I'm seeing that I never, ever think would be into women's football, I like tweeting, saying well done, or a retweeting it, or like, I thought I'd get more hate from going to the women's football. Nothing nothing at all. Yeah, we need to get one or two, but more people are saying, if that's what you enjoy doing, I might not come, but if you enjoy doing it, respect to you, Natalie, and it's like people that are diehard Reds, that are Stretford Enders, Jay Standers, that are like, fair play, fair play, oh, how do I go? So it's, it's definitely going to grow, and if we get like, like well, we will we'll be in the WSL. You're going to have your Liverpool. You're going to have City. You're going to have Everton. It's going to be, it's going to be electric. But I remember when I, I played at Wolves, and we used to have every year like we have Swedish rules are called, and it's basically fans who would come over and from Sweden. And they'd have the flags and that, and there's only a few of them, but they'd have the flags and they'd be chanting. And it does make a difference, to be fair, having that support. And you're not used to getting like a, a big amount of support, especially like with flags and stuff like that, like that enthusiasm. And it, it is good. So it's just fantastic to see you guys doing that on a much bigger scale as well. Definitely a positive, right? Yeah. I had some questions on Twitter earlier because I asked a few people, so we're going to go through some of them questions. Um, if I haven't got through your question, guys, I apologise, but we will get through it another time. Um, Shane said to ask you about Ballon d'Or. Yeah. That one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll that hey, you're stitching me up, mate. Um, <laughs> basically, what happened is uh, Molly Green, like I've just said to you, she had uh, she scored a goal against Palace. Definitely go check it out. And we got a trophy. It was about that big. Yeah. But it said, you know, goal of the month. And the next minute we did this Twitter poll and about over 200 people got involved, so that shows. And we said, who's the player of the month so far? And I said, and Alex Greenwood came out and won it. And instead of a trophy that big, our mate Ben, he did an upgrade and it went like that big. <laughs> so there's a picture on the Barmy Army Twitter, M-U-W-F-C, Barmy Army. Um, and it's Molly Green with this little trophy and it's Alex Greenwood with this massive beast and it's like a Ballon d'Or, so that's the story. <laughs> quality, quality, love it. Um, what centre-back would you love to see signed in the summer? What back four would you have next season with the new signings? That's an interesting one. I think we touched on Cooley Barley, didn't we, already? Yeah. Um, Dilitson have won as well, who I really like the look of, by the way. Still very young, but very talented. Um, for me, Cooley Barley is my, my preferred choice because I think he just looks solid. I would love to see the low starting more next season as well. And then obviously Lindelof and Shaw would fill the other two the other two places. Um, I don't know about you, Nat. Would you like to see us out back for next season? Yeah, Cullen, Cullen Barley, Dillit. I'm, I'm, like I said, I don't really watch these, so it's, it would be hard to, for me to say. I know a lot of people saying Harry Maguire, mm, is he United? You don't know, but that's sort of maybe the only one that I could potentially see that I could say, OK, he might come in and do a job, but he... You know, he's done all right, yeah, big, um, you know, when he played against uh, Liverpool and that, so maybe. But I think whoever Ollie's picks, it'll be it'll be a good signing. Yeah. Um, most of Harry Maguire, I, I compared him to, you know, the, the, the living wardrobe in Beauty and the Beast. Like <laughs> wardrobe face. That, that's what Harry Maguire makes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, fantastic World Cup, though. But this season, obviously, hasn't been that good, really, at Leicester. Again, yeah. is he just another rival hope English player? I, I'm not sure, but I, when we were talked talked about having him just after the World Cup, I was all for it. I was like, yeah, bring him in because we need strength in at the back and he, he was fantastic in that World Cup. But this season, he hasn't been that good, so maybe we were right to say clear of that one. I mean, the other one was uh, Aldevera, wasn't it? And he wasn't really, where's he been? So, yeah. maybe totally. getting someone from foreign league, try and get them a bit cheaper like we did with um, Victor. You never know. Yeah. Um, Anthony just made a good point in the comments as well. I read this earlier. Raphael, people were saying, would you take him back at United? I love Rafa at United. I thought, you know what, he was quality. But would you take him back now? I think that ship sailed. I mean, to be fair, he's doing well for Leon, And everyone, I met some French people out there, they, they, they like him. But I just think that ship sailed. And I hope not because, well, it might be a good signing, bringing back in. 
and then moved a lot up. And I think I he'd be a free as well, wouldn't he? He'd be on a free, I think. Okay, so if he's be on a free, why not? And he knows United and he'd play play out his skin for us, play him at right back, back and like I said, the lot further up. So that's something that we can do, maybe. Yeah, I, I love him, but I, I don't know if that like yeah, you yeah. the sale now. I mean for the dressing room I think he'd be a great, great um, player to take because his yeah. character like you say, he knows United, he loves United. Yeah. But what kind of wages is he gonna be on again? You know what I mean? We don't want to be tied into like another. I know it wouldn't be as much as Sanchez, but overplaying paying for players who are obviously near the end of their career. We don't want to fall into that trap again, do we? No. And I think how long has Ashley just got a new year a new year deal? So yeah, I think, but I think that's more Ashley Young. I think is more because of his character, because of the way yeah, he's, yeah. he is. He is the the guy, isn't he? He's the leader. He's been there for ages now, hasn't he? He knows the club through and through, and I think that's why he's got that deal really. And he, we can still make use of Ashley Young. And yeah. I know we saw the end of his career. He has lost a bit of pace. You can see that. However, it's, it's, we can still get plenty of use out of him. So I think that one year deal, I do kind of agree with that one. Yeah. I mean, um, with Ashley as well, let me just say this one thing. He is a legend. I won't have anything bad said about him. He came out, everyone had left. Everyone had left. I saw this clip when he was like doing this. Out yeah. And started singing. And then we started, oh, so for me, Ashley. He's in my heart for a life. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was quality, to be fair. Yeah. That's what you know. He, he is united through and through, isn't he? He's been yeah. there for a long time. I can see why they've done that deal. Um, Adam Bateman asked, he said, if you could pick one moment as the best so far in the after following the women's team, what would it be? Okay. So what one moment has stood out for you? So hard. There's so many moments because, like I said, we've won 12 nil, we won this nil. You know, we've done this, we beat WSL teams, but it's going to sound strange now. It's the Arsenal defeat, just the way they just, oh, that feeling when Molly Green scored, even though it was 2-1, but it showed they can hold their own, you know. If they if Arsenal didn't have that Miedema, she's quality, you know, that's what I'm saying about the talent. If they didn't have her, it would have been different. I'm not saying, oh, it's all through her, but, you know, we held our own. I think Millie Turner was amazing at the back. Um, Skipper Greenwood played in midfield again. Zellum was bossing the balls, pinging balls over. Um, so I think we get in that major, like you know, that real like European talented player. Then we can would have changed that game. But I think as well, there's little videos going round, and when Molly Green scores, and if you look, there's a little video from the actual crowd, and and then he fly over the top of the thing, <laughs> top of the thing, and the keeper was rattled. We were like screaming at the keeper every time she picked it up and like, tried to move it to the other side. No chance. We were going mad. It was. That and then all the girls were dead upset on that good day because they lost, isn't it? That was the semi final, they would have gone into yeah. the final. And they were like, we let you down. I said, don't ever say such stupidness because that day just to me it showed that level where how close we are to all the WSL. So I think it just that's the that's my moment anyway. Yeah, I, I, the one moment for me that stood out, I mean, I haven't been there, so it looks it's different when there, isn't it? But obviously, get that like the goal against Liverpool. I mean, yeah. that, the first game against Liverpool wasn't it enough to beat in Liverpool? That's always a nice feeling, and that one just stood out for me. Even though it's so like so far ago, and yeah. the girls have come such a long way since then, yeah. um, but still to beat Liverpool, it just feels nice, doesn't it? Yeah. So that one stands out for me definitely. Yeah. Um, we had a question about the kit for next season. Um, they said personally, and this was from Des. Personally, I like the I want the white shirt um, back, but it's yeah. not nothing against the pink. I actually love the pink shirt I this season. The pink. <laughs> I love the picture. I love it. And, um, yeah. I just actually ordered one with so Shaw on the back of it as well. Yeah. So be really cool. So, yeah, I love the pink one. Um, but I did like the white kit. The, the one that's spoken about is obviously the Aeon one, the white with a little red trim, yeah. um, which was a very nice kit. Um, but we always get white ones. And I, I really, this season when I saw Pogba was going to be wearing pink again, I was absolutely buzzing, to be honest. Yeah. I like your one. I like the blue one as well. So yeah, this one's smart. To be fair, very nice kit. I like I'd go for a blue one again, but then people will be like, "Oh, blue." But I love the pink. Got pink with six wear on the back. <laughs> yeah, pink. I, I, I'm all for the pink as well. Pink definitely for me yeah. is the the best. I think the pink is the best shirt this season. I'm actually not that fussed about the home shirt. I mean, I've got it, but I'm not that fussed about it this season. I don't think it's anything special. No, I know people who don't like it because it's too. It's got the black bits at the bottom, so I know people are really angry about it. But yeah, for me, I don't know, a red, 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 red as well. It doesn't have the whole V neck like. 
Laura Rain. Oh, I, I was just actually tweeting about that, about the V-neck on the women. It's not, no. I'm, I'm not a V-neck fan, to be honest with you. Her own neck all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what, though? Like, for me, like, the wacky the shirt, the better. And a lot of people, like, hate me for that. But I just love wacky shirts. Like, um, I remember, we used to collect, like, when I was a kid, I used to always get the pink Juventus shirts. Like, always used to collect them. That's why I was so busy when I saw United were getting pink more. Because I just love the fact that they were pink and they were different. Wow. Um. Obviously, that EA Sports shirt was released, wasn't it, as well, not long no, ago? No, that was That was wacky beyond wacky, wasn't it? That was crazy. Um, I no. wouldn't suggest that as a kid, of course not. But still, I thought, you know what? Like, I'm getting that. I'm getting that purely because it's just crazy. Um, no. What was your favourite shirt then? Like, if you could pick one shirt, what would you say stood out to you as your favourite like, ever? I like the white one. Remember when we were in Van Persie and we won the league? That yeah. one, I like that one. I had that shirt. Yeah. Um, I like this one to be fair. David Moyes season, you know, with the colour. Yeah. And obviously, Derek Cantona colour one. Yeah, that was quality. One that stands out for me as well, I remember getting it was the reverse of all the white with the gold. And uh, again, it's different, man. I just thought like that that's just class, like just completely different. Um and I like that one as well. So I like crazy shirts and people call me weird for that, but yeah, definitely like crazy shirts. Love what you uh, love, innit? Exactly. I, I think I just, I'm a bit weird, really. I do like <laughs> traditional men, though, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're only able to sign one player this summer, who would it be and why? That's a tough one. If you can only get one. God. I mean, under Jose, I was always said, like, buy me a centre back, let's get a centre back. <sighs> Probably, yeah, that Colin Barley. Just, but then I don't know. It's so tough now because under Josie, you thought, right, we're conceding a lot of goals, getting a centre back or maybe getting another forward. But I can't even think. I just think these these boys are just doing doing everything. And like, even with 10 injured players out, I just, the, other, the other young lads are coming through. So it just makes it so difficult to say this is an area where we definitely need to strengthen. Probably right winger, is, I'd say. So, but I don't really know who's a good right winger out there. Sancho, yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah. The thing is, though, like, we talk about Sancho, and like I said, I'm just hoping he's not an overhyped player because he's got lots of Chong coming through. And if Sancho isn't much better than Chong, why don't you change anything? Like, to give Chongy some time, like, do you know what I mean? So I, I'm, I'm really concerned about this overhyping of English players. I think yeah. if you can get him for a decent price, then, of course, go for it because he's obviously got a lot of ability. If he's playing with Solskjaer as well, he'll be fearless. So it, it could be fantastic, but I think 100 million is, is a bizarre price for someone mm. like that. But yeah, I I'd probably agree. I think we have to go for necessity. What do we most need? Not want, what do we need? Um, centre back obviously is a worry, but Small Dean has been fantastic. Yeah. And if Boy steps in, um, Jones, I don't really rate Phil Jones. I think mm. he would be the one that I'll get rid of if you're choosing um, to part with a centre back. Two and ZB, I'll really rate Two and ZB as well. Um, come back though. I don't think he's got. I know. Um, he went to Villa. He was in really good form. Obviously, he's injured now. He's in history. He hasn't been playing. Another sign, Tyrone Mings, at the moment. Um, but he looked absolutely solid. And I saw Villa fans were messaging me saying, like, he's absolutely quality. He's a rock at the back. Um, and I think, you know what? He could have been one for the future. But, but I think it's a shame because I don't think we're going to see two and two be united. Yeah. You're not the first person to say that to me. And I think, yeah, it's, it is a shame. Um, but yeah, I don't think he's going to come back. I think they'll sign someone. But I mean, there's, there's young kids coming through. I suppose that will think well might block their path. But you know, if why are we going to then say spend? I'm not. I'm an advocate for spending money. I know it sounds really strange, but why are we going to then go in overinflate someone that could just be average when you could have Swansea there? Yeah, oh. it's similar with Chong, isn't it? Chong situation. Um, yeah. I think a holding midfield position, like Matic was one that were people saying we desperately need there, but Scotty T. Yeah. Tom and I in there, he, he was fantastic the other day. And oh. like I say, he's not a glamorous player, he's not flashy, he's not going to do 10 step overs and beat a man or score a worldie, but he just wins the ball and gives it. And you need someone gutsy like that in the middle. Um, so I think Scotty McTominay for me, I think he answered a lot of critics the other day. And why not let him progress and fulfill that role? Um, after Matic is gone, yeah, definitely. That's, that's the anyway, but I'm all, at the minute. I'm like all for the youth. I'm like, yes, yeah, true. No matter what, if they're old enough, they're good enough. To, well, if they're good enough, they're old enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 
Oh, um, do you know what? We're so sure at the minute. I'm just feeling positive about absolutely anything. Like us, I'm entering every game, just thinking, you know what, we're we gonna win. Even the other day, um, I was doing a stream just before, and then someone asked me like, what's the score gonna be? And I didn't want to be, um, too confident. Like you don't want to say like an idiot. And I didn't want to say, oh yeah, we're gonna beat them like this, and then it comes back to bite you. But I said, you know what, like. With Solskjaer in charge, anything can happen. And I genuinely believe that. I think, and the players believe that at the minute. I think there's that little that hint of hope, that bit of belief. And you just never don't give up until the end. And if you've got that never say die attitude, anything can happen. And that's what I love about United at the minute because that's what he's brought back to the club. Definitely, because I think it's just even going back to like signings, it's just made you not think that we need any signings. You know, in a, in a strange way, it's made you think. Whatever all he touches will come to gold. So whoever he wants, I think he will buy, obviously he's going to buy someone. Whoever he wants, I trust him for 100%. I agree completely as whoever well. Whoever comes in, he's going to mill, build them, mould them, get him to play the way he wants. Obviously he knows who are good players and that, you know, he's managing before. So he might put someone from the Norwegian League, you never know. And usually people might kick off about that. But I think now he can do whatever, he can buy yeah. whoever. Oh, is that a wheel? Yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely. I think with uh, Solskjaer as well, what I love about him is you said about Casey Stone, everything she says, um, it just feels so right. And it's the same with Ollie. He doesn't use injuries as an excuse. He, does, he didn't even mention injuries really before that the other day. Um, and I just thought, you know what, that attitude, just keep him on, man. All the fans are royalty if he's not kept on there, surely. Yeah. And I think that positivity, no need for excuses. If it was your way around, if it was obviously Jose Mourinho, we would have had a list of excuses about the injuries and stuff going into that game. Oli doesn't do that. And no matter what players he signs or anything like that, they're all going to love playing under him because it, it, it gives them licence to be free, gives them licence to take risks. And he wants to attack, he wants to play the United way and that's what us as fans want to see. So if he's not given the job, like I say, there will be uproar. Definitely there will be uproar at United. Yeah, 100%. I'll be behind that. <laughs> Give it there with your army army flag. Like, you'll, you'll be in front of everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh, right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. And that, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, I've loved having you on the head oil treatment today. Have yeah, you found it? Oh, I enjoyed it. It's just good talking about, you know, obviously the boys and everything that happened in Paris, but just good talking about the girls and letting people hear about them. Um, and just how well they're doing. So I'm really happy. Thanks for having me on. No, anytime. And like I said, I would love to do more regular um, content linked to the ladies' team as well because they deserve it. They've been fantastic. Um, so, yeah, thank, thank you so much for coming on, mate. Really enjoyed it. Guys, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Obviously, the hairdryer treatment. Drop a like, drop a comment. Hit Nat up on the socials as well. Nat, do you want to let people know where they can find you? Um, at Natalie17 underscore 17. And I've got my own YouTube channel, not in that ATV. So I speak a lot about the women on there. I speak about the men too, but it's mainly a lot about the women. So if you did enjoy what I was saying and about how Casey's doing, about all the girls and how they're playing, then come and find me on there. But there's links on my Twitter, so you can definitely find me off that as well. Yeah, so go and make sure you check her out, guys. As you've, just, you've heard today, she's got fantastic knowledge. She's a massive, massive red. Um, and she's part of the Barmy Army. So what more could you want? Um, Take care, guys. Tomorrow there will be a preview up for the Arsenal game as well, um, featuring some special guests, and Nat hopefully will be featuring on there as well. Um, so we'll hear Nat's predictions for the Arsenal game tomorrow, so we're not going to give anything away just yet. Um, but I hope you have a lovely evening. See you all soon, and thanks again, guys. Cheers.